okay in my previous video we talked about the http event collector related logs and how to see it right in splunk now in this video we will slowly move from that input phase basically we are discussing about lot of lot of processors related to the input phase we'll move to parsing phase okay and then slowly we will see in the indexing phase how the different processors are engaged and then slowly search and other other splunk logs so in the parsing phase so if we just deep dive into parsing phase there are a lot of things happen there are other other phases as well which i i have not shown over here maybe because of like it will it will be too much information at the one time so let's let's see in the in the parsing phase what are the other phases between this parsing phase and indexing phases also there so if you see it over here after parsing phase there are merging phase and there are typing phase as well so in the parsing phase lot of things happen like a splunk basically determines what kind of encoding that file is and based on your props.com settings it basically process that that file let's say you have some events coming as a as a, as a japanese uh, language right so those events are also getting processed by splunk so that those events will also be written as is in the in the splunk index as well so those kind of processings are done by splunk at this phase at the parsing phase when we do the utf8 encoding now after that what it do it it does the line breaking based on your props.conf settings so what if say, see we generally we have seen like splunk breaks that event every line by default right but you can set up in the props.conf where it should the should break the line and those stuff so those rules are getting checked over here matrix processing are newly added over here i think from version 7 onwards splunk started supporting matrices so in this parsing phase this this also splunk also uh, process that matrices as well over there okay now the another another interesting thing happens is called header processing maybe when we will discuss about this one today we will see so now after parsing phase what happens the aggregation happens over there it is called the merging phase so basically when you have multi-line events and all those kind of aggregation happens at this particular merging phase so when we will see it we will we will we will talk about that one as well and then in the typing phase what happens like all the regular expression replacement even if you are converting logs to matrices so those kind of processing annotations happen in this particular phase as well okay if you see like this this parsing phase these are all become actually the part of the parsing phase only but those are different different phases over here so for different different phases as we have seen it like different different processors are getting involved over here so let's start with the utf encoding so generally what happened like as i said when you have events coming in different languages other than english let's say japanese korean so so the utf8 processor getting are getting involved over here so what it what it basically output it outputs the utf encoded data so for an example let's say uh, and and the and the component name over here is the utf8 processor over here now for an example let's say i have this this data coming up shift gis data so this is japanese data now if i so if i if the utf8 processor is getting engaged and it will be engaged in this case so the output will be something like this one over here and this portion this this is the one actually will be getting indexed into splunk similarly for the line breaking so we will we will see and demo today after after this one so in the line breaking phase what happens like we are our events are coming up into splunk right the raw events and then there is a processor called line breaker which basically breaks the events according to the rule in the props.conf settings over there now if you see splunk supports or splunk basically process csv files and json files as well over there right now now before that like this is the processor you should be uh, seeing in the splunk log over here now 
if I just come back to the CSV and JSON processing, it will be similar kind of stuff, right? The same line breaker will be engaged over here and what they will do. So they will basically process the CSV and JSON data and also it identifies what kind of fields needs to be extracted over here. If you remember like for CSV and JSON, you do not need to write field extraction logic separately, right? So you just write index extraction equals to JSON. So that, that will basically take care of the all the field processing related to the JSON objects, right? Even if you just select the source type as CSV in Splunk, so it, will, it will automatically process all the CSV file and automatically extract all the fields from there. So that is how it works over here. So during the line break, it determines what kind of file it is and what kind of fields also it needs to be extracted over there and header processor as we as as i told this is a very interesting feature in splunk i don't know how many of you know about this one so there is an app maybe i think when i was seeing the code of that app i have seen this one at the first time i think it is the email email indexing law indexing app maybe if i just find that app i'll i'll be giving that link in the in the video description as well. Just have a look at the code of that, how it is ingesting the log. And over there, they have used this particular technique, whatever we are going to discuss today, to index the data into Splunk. So now, this is how it goes. So let's say from a host one, we have a host called host one. We are, we are sending the events to Splunk, something like this one. So if you see, there are three stars, then the Splunk word in a capital letter and then three star again then we have given some host equals some other host name and we have some sample log files over here log lines over here so we have sent these two lines into splunk so how splunk will process this one so there is a processor called header processor over here so so if you have if you whenever splunk will see this particular string over here right so it will consider it as a header and then according to the settings in your props.conf it will process it accordingly and how it will process if you see it over here it ignores the first line based on the props.conf settings obviously uh, and what will happen the host value if you see like we have given it host value over here right even though our actual host which is sending the data is the host one but when we are sending the event into splunk we have actually overriding that host name with some other host name over here that's why whatever event will be getting indexed into splunk it will be indexed with this particular host name not with this host name so that is the difference over here and this is, this is called the header processing in splunk as well and the processor name is header processor but one thing i wanted to mention over here like when i was doing it this one this particular exercise in in my standalone splunk this one i could not able to find it out the the he header processor related logs maybe you try from your end and see like how how it works maybe try with the universal forwarder as well but ideally it should work for both standalone splunk as well as log uh, log comings from the universal forwarder and other other external system but but the idea you got it over here this is a very interesting one so now let's 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 see a demo how how this this thing these three things works over here utf8 processor and the line breaker maybe i'll try to show you this one as well but i tell you to show you the other logs how, how how it is created but as i as i said i could not able to find the header processor logs in splunk okay so first we will see the utf8 related stuff over here so for that what i have done it over here is so there is a data as i as i've shown you in the in the ppt and this one i have downloaded from the splunk itself so this data is a actually a gis data that means if i if i just talk about the character set over here it's called shift dash gis and it's a japanese data okay as i have shown you in my ppt now whenever we want to index this kind of data into splunk what we need to do is as splunk by default applies utf8 over here so if you want to process any other kind of data encoded data over there so you need to mention the character set in the props.conf okay if you see it like i have created the props.conf and with this particular stanza and i have given the character set as shift dash gis so with this one we will be able to index the data particular data in that format so let us see it 
so f before that we are talking about utf8 processor right so let us go to settings server con server settings now in the server logging if i just search for utf8 if you see the current logging level is one over here so that means until unless some error or some some warning is coming up over here it won't it won't log anything over here now as we are doing some experiment so i will make it as info now so in in normal day to day scenario you do not need to make it as info even most of you will not be able not have access to this particular screen as well because this mostly belongs to the uh, admin privileges so now i am doing this one because i just wanted to show you this 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 stuff happens how this stuff works over here so so i made this one logging level as info then what i'll do is i will go to settings and i'll go to add data so from here we will be trying to upload that particular data over here so i'll select that file let's say this data dot dat just now i have shown you this one now source type i will be selecting if you see like without that source type it is it is reading that event as is right so basically it is trying to apply the utf8 format now if i just select the source type whatever source type i have mentioned it over here gis underscore data so let's see what what happens over here so once i selected that one if you see it is already encoding like this one so so that's the difference over here so if i just go ahead and index it to my main index so let's see what are the stuff coming up in my into my underscore internal index so we will go to index equals to underscore internal source type equals to splunk d for last 15 minutes the component if you see it over here the utf8 processor is coming up over here right now we need to find out our data over here so that's why we will search with shift gis so this one the the encoded the encoder we have given it over here so if you see it like these are the three logs generated by the utf8 processor the first log is that no character set was discovered with character set auto setting from the initial content so using this particular character set for for the encoding purpose and then this is just convert this using this particular character set and those those related logs over here it is coming up over here so that's the utf8 processor now let's move on to the line breaker so that's a, that's a very easy one actually so we will go to the similar way we'll try to see in the settings whether the line breaker is what is the level log level it is still worn see if you see like another stuff you when you make it to info like any any of this particular channels you make it to info and you restart splunk it will automatically move to its default level that means the one for the log line breaker or utf8 processor over here that's also another uh, interesting things to know so so the line breaking processor we make it as info then we will just try to add some some data over here let's say a csv file okay so we'll just upload a csv file over here so if i just show you that file over here this is very simple csv file i have taken over here so nothing nothing fancy stuff over there so if i just go to next source type equals to csv if you see splunk already identified this particular file as csv that's why it is selecting this particular source type automatically okay then you'll go to next and review and submit so similar stuff so let's let's run for the splunk d for last 15 minutes and see if our component has been triggered or not if you see the line breaking processor has been triggered over here now we need to see we need to see our file over here so our file name is data.csv so if i just go to give data dot csv over here so these are all the events related to that whatever we have ingested data dot csv over here right and if you see like what truncation length what look behind it has used for that data everything is getting logged under that line breaking processor over here when this is true for the simple log file as well over here okay normal normal log file and and json file as well over here so so this is the line breaking processor 
now let's let's see a demo on on that header processor over here so for that first we will do as i said we will search for the header processor so this is the processor name so currently the login level is info i have just made it before this before i was making this particular video i was actually experimenting with with this guy over here now if i just go to settings add data okay and go to upload so this is the file i created i was talking about so if you see the first line is that this 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 keyword and then i have just given that the host equals to demo host and then some other lines now if you see for the other events so let me let me show you that one so if i just go to main index for for last 60 minutes okay whatever data i have ingested all are having host value as this one right so now we are trying to basically replace this host name or override this host name with our own host name okay that's why we are sending this 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 particular line with our events over here so now if i just go over here in the add data select that particular file let's say header data.txt i'll go to next see currently it is without selecting any kind of source type it is it will be ingesting something like this one now if i just show you the source type i have created called header underscore data and this particular settings is important header mode so if i just go to props.conf i think i have opened it somewhere in the in the in the splunk documentation so header mode is basically determines whether to use the inline Splunk directive to rewrite the index time fields. Now it it could be either empty, which is the default one, or it could be always first line or none. Now as for us, this particular stuff is exists on the first line. We will be we have given the first line over here. If you see it, so so if I just go to add data and select that particular source type header data. If you see, it is only ingesting those two sample log lines. It has ignored the first line. And if you see when you, it will index into Splunk, so let us, let, let us index that one. Now, if I just search it for last 60 minutes, source type equals to header data, right? So if you see the host value, it is not, it is coming as completely different, whatever we have set in our log file. Okay, so we have overridden that host value with this partic with that particular directive over there. So that's how the header processing works. Now over here, I was as I told, I was not able to find that component. I do, I am not sure whether I am doing something wrong or something has changed in the Splunk eight. So the component, if you see the header header processor, is not here. Maybe you try from your end as well and let me know like how, how it goes for you. So, so hopefully we got a fair idea about three things like the, how UTF-8 processor works, how the header processor works and how the line breaking rules works. Okay. In next videos, we will talk about more stuff about the parsing phase. Then we'll slowly move to the indexing phase. So hopefully this video was helpful. See you in next video.